Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing with another uh, video for you. I am going to showcase one of my products on this, so bear with me. Um, however, I do have a little test for you, a little intake manifold flow bench test. But anyway, let's describe what this head is because this is what I use for the basis for this test. Um, this is my um, Dragon Slayer that I ported. I call this one my 248 standard W. So what it is, it's 248 cc's. It's standard, which means standard valve spacing. But this one has a 2125 intake valve and a 1575 exhaust valve. So the reason why the exhaust valve is smaller than the regular Dragon Slayer is because I made the intake valve bigger. So this doesn't come standard. And if you try doing it on a regular standard um, Dragon Slayer head, you might forget from Brodix, it won't work. You'll have issues. I order them custom and then I can do my stuff to it. So anyway, standard valve spacing, 2125, 1575. It does not have a push rod pin. So this one actually requires shaft rockers. Sorry about my camera movement here, but this one requires shaft rockers. So it, in other words, the push rod pinch has been moved out. Let me kind of describe here. So um, I didn't weld the push rod pinch. I have them um, not put the slots in them or put them at it with that require a 450 offset. So you have to have a 450 offset shaft rocker to run this head. Um, so, but anyway, you can do a 550 and then you can run an on center lifter. But if you do a 450, you have to have a 180 offset on lifter. 550, no offset on lifter. Um, because of that, it makes the push rod pinch itself bigger. This is the wing that I'm talking about. That's why it says W. That's the wing. I've started doing these, I don't know, a few years now, but, um, or maybe a year. My time seems weird now. But anyway, it's one of those things I've done on some heads, but not on others. It's, it's seen, from the track results, it's been pretty good. I will say that from the customers around on the track, it's been pretty healthy. So and there's, if you want to know why they're in here, the best person, there's a, Darren Morgan has videos about this itself and it kind of explains it and he does a real good job better than I do of explaining that. Um, so I won't bore you with that, but if you want to know more about that, you can ask him, but I mean, I could tell you, but his explanation is far better. Um, anyway, really good head. This one flows this. So let's look at cylinder one. This is what it flows. So this is intake side. And if you look here, I'll get my mouse going here. Bear with me. This is the in, the cylinder one is what it flows. So it flows 341. It's pretty good at one inch valve lift. And if you look at, I remember my numbers are most important with are four, six, and one. So four, 257, that's about all you're gonna really get unless you start moving the valve spacing over, then you get more or bigger valves. 322 at six is pretty stout. That's a good number there. Really good. And then peak number 341, which means it's still picking up air. It's still moving in quite a bit of air. The exhaust, now this is without an exhaust pipe, by the way. So it's got a smaller exhaust valve, so it's a 1.575, and it's still moving pretty healthy amount of air. So really good there. Um, can't complain. So really healthy. Now these are on the Sanya's bench. So, but today's test, so I went three minutes with stuff and you watched, thank you for doing it. Today's test was to show you this. So this is what it flows with a clay entry, and I'll show you what I mean. That's this. So that's put on the port and you flow it that way. So the next thing I did, because this is what the customer is going to be running, this is a Holly Pro Dominator tunnel ram. And it has been ported, of course. And I'll be porting it next. But uh, this test was to see how much flow you actually lose with your manifolds. Now, this one's pretty rough. Holly doesn't even make this anymore. I wish they did because I've actually ported one of these and a set of Dragon Slayers and a customer made 774. So this one probably won't because it's a pump gas deal. But uh, anyway, it's gonna have some work done to it and I'll flow it um, after it's done. But what I did is I float it just with the clay and then I bolted this manifold on and float it with the manifold and see how much actual flow loss it has. Because really the whole this whole system is a supposed to be flowing together anyway, because it gets you a better idea of what's happening. But if you were strictly worried about flow, if you just made a manifold that big, you would flow more. Of course, it'd be a turd. So there's other considerations besides just flow when you're designing a manifold, like length is probably more important than flow because then you could do um, wave tuning. But anyway, typical tunnel rams flow more than single planes because the runners are straight. You could tell it's right into the port. There's no, I've got to turn this, this carburetor's up here, I've got to turn this way and go into it. So this is a, usually it's a better deal. This one's just very tight. Um, what I am gonna, am gonna end up doing, I'll show you later on. In the next video, I'm going to weld this whole area up here because once I start porting, and I've done this before, it'll break through here. So it'll have to be filled in with weld anyway. So I will 
Of course, I'm gonna try to bring these out and make a nice kind of a rectangle design and get more area here because it needs it anyway. It's kind of tight. But, so how much did this lose? Well, if you saw the, slightly at the other, the second ago, you could see it. But, so we know what it flowed with the clay, which is supposed to be the best it should ever flow. And we see what it's gonna flow with this manifold stock. So we go over here and you can see. So this cylinder two right here is what it flowed just with the manifold bolted on. So I did drill alignment holes, so this is exactly how it should sit when it's on the motor. So you can tell this is uh, what it was before. This is with the manifold attached, and this is the difference. So you can see it loses 31 CFM at, uh, let's see what the lift that is, that's 700 lift. So for the most part, it's lost right around 30 at these points, and a little bit less, of course, when it's at less flow. So it's, it is hurting it. Um, there's no doubt about it. So porting it, hopefully we'll get some of this back. I don't think I'll get it all back just because there's not, it's not easy to make a cast manifold flow exactly what the head does. Now, if it was like a sheet metal manifold, that'd be a different story altogether. That's not what we got to work with. So I'll try to make this as good as possible and we'll see what happens. But so if you're wondering, well, how much flow did you lose? Quite a bit, quite a bit. So just something to keep in mind. So if you've got say a Super Victor, or that's out of the box and you've got a good set of heads like these, you can pretty much drop even more ZFM than this. So this looks bad, but I promise you if I put a Super Victor on there, it only flow at 290s. So yeah, manifolds are pretty important. So I try to encourage customers to have me port them and you know, kind of match the heads. It's still gonna lose flow, but not near as much. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and take care. Bonus for you guys. Um, I decided I'd float this head on the Superflow flow bench, so the Superflow 750, there it is. Uh, anyway, float it there. Yeah, of course, this bench reads higher than my Sanya is. So how good this head is, it's really good. Let's look at the numbers. There you go. So intake and exhaust, that's a 4155 bore. Um, the exhaust flows less on the Superflow than on the Sanya's. The intake flows better than the Sanya's. But you look at it, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good head. So uh, there you go. Okay, guys, I have now finished porting this Holly uh, tunnel ram intake. Now I'm flowing attached to the head. So you saw just a little bit ago, I flowed it um, directly attached to the head stock. And now I have ported it. Um, quite a bit, it's got taken out. If you notice here, you see it on the rails here. There's a weld bead here because what happened is... We have to weld the whole part in here because what happens when you take that D out, you'll break through. Um, so anyway, have to add there. Well, whenever you weld, put that much heat in it, it causes like a bow here. So a little bead here. This still has to be machined. I'll machine it flat. So that's the final stage. So actually get machined here, then break on the faces there to make sure everything's nice and true before it goes out. But anyway, uh, it doesn't hurt for the flow test anyway. So I'll port it up. This is burr finished, so it's rough, doesn't really care. This part, the runners are where your focus should be. But let's see what actually happened and how much flow uh, changed. Okay, this is graphs, so I can show you this way first. I'll show you the raw numbers in just a minute. But you see this blue line here, this is intake flow. If you look at this blue line here, this is the head itself, just flowing it as it is. And uh, this one right here is the ported intake, and this is the stock intake. So you could tell the ported intake is way better than the not ported intake, but it's still not matching what this is. And I know you would think, well, a ton of ram should, shouldn't have flowed close to the same. It can, unless it's a different design. This one, it's hard to show you, but it's um, the runners don't exactly line right. It's hard to explain. In other words, you've got a port opening like this, but the intake's pointing like this. So even though they're the same here, I'm exaggerating, by the way. The intake is coming in this way, then it goes that way. So it's, even though it's kind of a straight shot, better than like a single plane, it's still not perfect. But let's look at the raw numbers. Okay, so here we go. So this is this is on the Sanya's bench, by the way. So it actually flowed a little bit better on the sewer flow. So this is the head bench, right, head flow, just the heads, what they flowed. This is the uh, unported intake flow. And as you can tell, it went from flowing Looks like, I'm gonna go a little bit closer, 338 to 314 peak. And this is the difference between that right here, 
the head. And how much you lost just pulling the intake when I lost 31 CFM. Now this is the intake when it's all done being ported. So it's still lost, there's no doubt about it. It actually gained at one and two, which is weird. But there are other points, it's still lost about the worst 12 CFM, but nothing like the loss of about 27 or so there. So uh, ported intake seems like it helped quite a bit. So hopefully that gives you some more information. And you can see that porting intakes does help. And if you did, like some people have that formula, which I don't know if I totally believe that two horsepower per CFM, just the porting and the intake look like you're going to gain uh, quite a bit of horsepower if you did that formula. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video.